Good morning, everybody. Uh, it's Pastor John here at New Life Church in Ilwaka, Washington. And today is the message for Sunday, April 11th. Uh, very glad that you have decided to join us today. And I'm going to be teaching this morning. And it's, uh, that's what I'm doing. You're not going to get a whole lot of preaching today. Uh, you're going to get uh, a very solid understanding, though, of what I think is something that's important to our faith as as it's as it's all inclusive if we talk about from beginning to end of our faith i want to talk about something that covers all of this subject let me explain so we had a question come in and the question was what is god's plan of salvation well if you have a plan it's got to be a really good plan so think about a movie that where they're going to uh, there's going to be a heist, or there's going to be some grand scheme that has to uh, d has to be coordinated down to the second. You've seen good movies like that, right? Well, they all start with this plan, and they roll out the paper on the desk, and everybody stands around, and they look, and they see, well, this is how we're going to do this, and this is how we're going to do this. Well, guys, we actually have God's plan for salvation right here. And a lot of people miss it, but that's really what the Bible is. The entire story of the Bible from beginning to end is actually God's communication to us for this plan of salvation. Now, there are certain scriptures that articulate a specific point very well, or, or they talk about one area that uh, God was that made the necessity for uh, salvation. For example, Adam and Eve sinned. There's a need for salvation. Uh, how is he going to do this? And so there's prophecies that talk about the Messiah. The Messiah comes. Uh, he sacrificed. He dies for our sins. And so all of this is included in this story or this book we call the Bible. But when you put it all together... Well, this whole thing is like that plan that is unfurled on the desk. And you get to actually hear God's plan for how he was going to redeem the earth from the very pages of Scripture. And like I said, there's certain Scriptures that articulate a particular point or piece uh, a little bit better than others. And for that, I want us to actually go to chapter 5 of the book of Romans. In Romans 5, we get this very clear synopsis of the plan of salvation. And I'm going to read this whole chapter to you. I want you to hear what it says in Romans chapter 5 concerning the plan of salvation. It says, Therefore, since we have been made right in God's sight by faith, we have peace with God because of what Jesus Christ our Lord has done for us. Now, it starts right there. It says we've been made right in God's sight. It doesn't say how yet. It simply says we have been made right in God's sight. Well, how, how, did, how did he accomplish this? Because of what Jesus Christ, our Lord, has done for us. You notice he doesn't say what you did or what I did. It says what Jesus Christ has done for us. It says, because of our faith, Christ has brought us into a place of undeserved privilege where we now stand, and we confidently and joyfully look forward to sharing God's glory. Undeserved privilege. Once again, you hear that word, we didn't do anything. We weren't even deserving of the privilege to be made right in God's sight. But because of Christ, this occurs. And so we now have this tremendous privilege to stand. And we confidently and joyfully look forward to sharing God's glory. Do you hear those words? Confidently and joyfully look forward to sharing God's glory. That is a privilege, a tremendous privilege. And absolutely one that's undeserved. Verse 3 says, We can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials, for we know that they help us develop endurance. 
And endurance develops strength of character, and character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. And this hope will not lead to disappointment. For we know how dearly God loves us because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with love. When we were utterly helpless, we're getting back into that salvation story again here. When we were utterly helpless, Christ came at just the right time and died for us sinners. Now, most people would not be willing to die for an upright person, though someone might perhaps be willing to die for a person who is especially good. But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. You see what, you see what he's saying here? Somebody might, maybe, be willing to lay down their life for someone who is especially good or exceptionally good. You might be willing to lay your life down for them. But Christ laid his life down for us while we were still sinners. While we were still what you would call enemies of God, Christ died for us. And since we've been made right in God's sight by the blood of Christ... He will certainly save us from God's condemnation. See, it's the blood of Christ poured out that saves us from God's condemnation. Well, how, how is that possible, Pastor? Well, you have to get back into the whole story, and you have to understand the context of what they're saying here. See, blood sacrifice was part of what was required according to the law of Moses. That's how they covered sin. And so when somebody would sin, there had to be a blood sacrifice. Well, Jesus was that sacrifice, and he was the last sacrifice that we would ever need because it's because of his blood being poured out because he was willing to give up his life for us that we can certainly be saved from God's condemnation. Verse 10, For since our friendship with God was restored by the death of his son, while we were still his enemies, we will certainly be saved through the life of his son. So now we can rejoice in our wonderful new relationship with God because our Lord Jesus Christ has made us friends with God. We couldn't be friends with God when we were sinners. It, it, it wasn't possible. That wasn't something that could occur. But Jesus covers our sins and suddenly we're made right in the sight of God. We're no longer subject to condemnation. We don't have to fear anymore. So now we can walk boldly into God's presence because we've been made right through Jesus Christ. And because we've been made right, now we can enjoy a renewed relationship. We can be friends with God again. Verse 12 says, When Adam uh, sinned, sin entered the world. Adam's sin brought death. So death spread to everyone, for everyone sinned. Yes, people sinned even before the law was given, but it was not counted as sin because there, were not, there was not yet any law to break. Still, everyone died from the time of Adam to the time of Moses, even those who did not disobey an explicit commandment of God as Adam did. Now, Adam is a symbol, a representation of Christ who was yet to come. But there is a great difference between Adam's sin and and God's gracious gift. For the sin of this one man, Adam, brought death to many. But even greater is God's wonderful grace and his gift of forgiveness to many through this other man, Jesus Christ. And the result of God's gracious gift is very different from the result of that one man's sin. For Adam's sin led to condemnation. But God's free gift leads to our being made right with God, even though we are guilty of many sins. For the sin of this one man, Adam, caused death to rule over many, but even greater is God's wonderful grace and his gift of righteousness. For all who receive it will live in triumph over sin and death through this one man, Jesus Christ. Did you hear that? All who receive this gracious gift, this gift of God, this gift of salvation that comes through Jesus Christ, they will receive, or they will live 
in triumph over sin and death. Yes, Adam's one sin brings condemnation for everyone, but Christ's one act of righteousness brings a right relationship with God and new life for everyone. Hey, new life for everyone? That's last week's message. Yeah, because these absolutely connect. The entire reason that Jesus came and died on the cross was so that we could have this restored relationship with God, so that we could experience new life. Remember, he said, I, don't, I, I didn't just come to give you life. I came to give you a more abundant life. That's this new life, this life in God, restored relationship with God. That's a tremendous privilege, and that's the life abundant that Jesus was talking about. Because one person disobeyed God, many became sinners. But because one person obeyed God, many will be made righteous. Verse 20, God's law was given so that all people could see how sinful they were. But as people sinned more and more, God's wonderful grace became more and more abundant. So just as sin ruled over all people and brought them to death, now God's wonderful grace rules instead, giving us right standing with God and resulting in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So, in short... It comes down to this. We sinned, and that prevented us from having any relationship with God. It was not like he originally intended it to be. So the only way that we could have the relationship restored, it, the one that he intended for us to have, where we could really be his friends, well, for that, we had to have Jesus' sacrifice. And that sacrifice was the plan. The plan of salvation? Well, Ephesians 1, uh, verse 4 reads this way. Even before God made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. This is what he wanted to do. And it gave him great pleasure. So we, pra we praise God for the glorious grace he has poured out on us who belong to his dear son. So those of us who receive God's wonderful grace and his gift of righteousness, well, we're going to live in triumph over sin and death through Jesus Christ. And then in, here in Ephesians 3, we can gain even more insight into God's plan by looking at and moving closer to our next question for the morning. So let's go to Ephesians 3, and I'm going to read verse 6. It says, And this is God's plan. Both Gentiles and Jews who believe the good news share equally in the riches inherited by God's children. Both are part of the same body. And both enjoy the promises of blessing because they belong to Christ Jesus. By God's grace and mighty power, I've been given the privilege of serving him by spreading this good news. This is Paul writing. He says, Though I am the least deserving of all God's people, he graciously gave me the privilege of telling the Gentiles about the endless treasures available to them in Christ. I was chosen to explain to everyone this mysterious plan that God, the creator of all things, had kept secret from the beginning. God's purpose in all this was to use the church to display his wisdom and its rich variety to all the unseen rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. This was his eternal plan, which he carried out through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Because of Christ and our faith in him, we can now boldly and confidently come into God's presence. We kind of read that in Romans 5. You see a repeat here in Ephesians 3. It's because of Christ that we can boldly approach God. That's how we can be his friend again. That's how this whole relationship works. It comes through Christ. So you're, you're repeating yourself, Pastor, a little bit. But I want you to hear verse 10 again. It says, God's purpose in all of this was to use the church to display his wisdom in its rich variety to all the unseen rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. This was his eternal plan, which he carried out through Christ Jesus, our Lord. And that's what brings us to our second question this morning. 
The question was, what is our role in salvation? So first, what is God's plan for salvation? Well, we talk about that. Well, what is our role in the, this whole salvation process? Our salvation is not simply about having a relationship with God or being rescued from the consequences of sin. Our salvation has a larger purpose overall, and it's for the kingdom of God. And that purpose is both collectively as a church body and individually as me and as you. Now, collectively, we just read God's purpose in all of this was to use the church to display his wisdom and its rich variety to all the unseen rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. I want you to pick up what God's putting down here. A big part of God's plan of salvation was to show everyone that even before the foundations of the earth were created, that he was always in control and that he knew exactly what he was doing. You often hear questions like, well, why did God allow us to sin if he knew that uh, if that was going to happen? Like, why did he make us if he knew we were going to sin? He gave us free will so that our love for him would be genuine. He didn't make mindless automatons who were just forced to love him. We're his children. We are a favored creation. Yet he knew that he gave us free will. We were going to mess it up. He knew that we would not do this thing well. So even before he made us, he came up with a solution. So before you think, well, why would God let this happen? God knew before he even created the earth that we were going to mess this thing up. And so he had a plan before he ever said, let there be light. God knew what he was doing. And so, if you knew that everybody was going to ultimately sin, you come up with a plan. You come up with a solution. That's what God did. And then that shows that even from the beginning, he was in charge. He knew exactly what was going on. So everybody's all freaking out. Oh, the humans sinned. The humans say it. We're a bunch of sinners. Well, if God knew, what about the authorities in, in the uh, unseen places? Or sorry, the unseen rulers and the authorities in the heavenly places. What about them? Well, God says, hey, settle down. I know what's going on. And I'm in charge here. But the purpose is not just corporate. See, corporately, that shows that God's wisdom was in place even beforehand. Corporately, our, our ability to exist as a church is because uh, God had this plan from the beginning. But our purpose is also individually. Now, the question was asked, what is our role in salvation? If you're looking for an action step, to salvation like what's the checklist how can I be saved there's not one we can't earn salvation we can't be good enough for it it's a free gift it's God's gracious gift did you not hear Romans 5 this is God's gift to us and the way that we receive salvation is not through our actions it's by believing in Acts the Philippian jailer asked Paul and Silas what must I do to be saved Paul and Silas responded believe in the Lord Jesus Christ if you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, the Messiah, the Christ, that's all that's required for salvation. There's not any extra steps. But what we talked about last week, that is not the limit of the gift of salvation. Last week, we learned that since we're no longer slaves to sin, that now we can operate in a new life, being controlled by the love of Christ. So if your belief in Jesus is legit, if you believe he's the Messiah, well, now you can live a life controlled by his love. In other words, you can be out there adhering to the teachings of Jesus and doing what he said from the beginning. In 2 Peter 3, 9, it says, God does not want anyone to be destroyed. He wants everyone to repent. Well, that's exactly what Jesus said when he created the Great Commission. Matthew 28, 18 
I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. This is Jesus talking. He says, Therefore go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I've given you. And be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. And he also said in Luke 14, 23, Go out into the country lanes and behind the hedges and urge anyone you find to come so the house will be filled. As far as our responsibility in salvation, the process, there's not one. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's how you're saved. But once you're saved, recognize that God has this incredible life that he wants you to live, being controlled by the love of Christ. And that Jesus' instructions were to go into all the world, even behind the hedges, and make disciples, to fill the house. Our role in salvation is to make sure that everyone else is aware of the gift of salvation. That's our responsibility. So when it comes to what is our role in salvation, this is really simple, folks. Go into all the world, preach the gospel, make disciples. Well, pastor, I don't want to hear your well, pastor, this morning. Because that's our command from Jesus. Go into all the world, preach the gospel, make disciples. Go behind the hedges and compel them to come. There's a lot of hurting people in this world, and they don't have to be. Because of the gift of salvation that was given to you can be extended to them as well. So go share your gift with a hurting, broken, and dying world. That is our responsibility, and that is our only role in salvation, to live our life controlled by the love of Christ. Let's close in prayer. Father, I thank you for those who've watched today, and I ask that you guide them, Holy Spirit, that you already have divine appointments prepared for them so that they can speak your truth the truth of the gospel, the truth of your love to a broken world around them. Let them be an extension of your hands and feet. Show them how to be ministers of reconciliation to a broken world. Lord, your plan from the beginning was that you would die for us so that we could be your friend again. But you also knew that you wanted to use us to share this gift with others. Let us have a boldness, Lord, as a church collectively, corporately, and individually to go share the gospel with those who desperately, desperately need to hear it. We love you, Lord, and we say thank you. And it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. As I close today, I just want to encourage you to be willing to share these messages. We put them on our Facebook page for a reason. And I invite you to share this with someone that you think may need to hear it. If you know someone this morning who needs to hear God's plan of salvation, and you think that this is the format in which they can receive that, by all means, share that with someone else. We're not trying to keep this a secret. We want to make this plan known. I love you guys. I'll see you next week.